I saw a video of your son saying that your favorite food is popcorn. I have a popcorn problem. I can't stop once I start. I've been known to drive by the movie theater, pop, walk in, just buy a bag of popcorn, and then uh, it's not the most what? economical. Oh yeah, it's so good. This is Andrew Scheer. You may have heard him called Stephen Harper with a smile after he was elected leader of the Conservative Party of Canada this spring. But who is this guy who wants to become your next prime minister in two years' time? I recently sat down with Scheer in downtown Toronto for a casual afternoon brewski to find out. A conservative strategist that I talked to at the convention said that you were a good guy to have a beer with, or maybe even two. So cheers, Andrew Scheer. Well, thanks for this. Thanks for the invitation. <laughs> and so, what's your beer? What are you drinking? It's Pilsner. Yeah. This is the Champagne of the Prairies, Champagne uh, of the as Prairies. we call it, yeah. This is, we bring this out on special occasions like um, Thursday afternoons. In the federal election 2015, conservatives got smoked. Women and young people basically said, I don't want Stephen Harper. Tell me why you want them to vote for you in 2019. Like, give us the pitch. I believe the conservative message of a more dynamic private sector, greater individual liberty, uh, strong, secure, a country with a principal foreign policy, that is a message that speaks to every Canadian, but it's how we communicate to different groups of you know, Canadians. And so I think the way I come across, the way I can pitch that on a, in an authentic way, having had a relatable experience, you know, growing up in a very, very middle class family, that's what I'm hoping to connect with. I'm curious to know what you think needs to happen to get more women into politics and what you specifically are going to do. I think outreach is huge. I think there are a lot of unintentional barriers to entry for, for women in, in politics, especially women who are balancing families with careers. A lot of things can be intimidating. The amount of after work hours that are required to sell memberships to vote and, and get involved, that may have a, an impact in a different way, depending on if you're male or female. The Conservative Party, we believe very strongly that, uh, that, that everything is arrived at on merit and that, and that uh, people are qualified for the positions that they have. But I think what the party can do is to show women to say, look, here's a path, here's the support you'll get as, as an institution that will do everything we can to, to make it compatible, to make it fit. I want to have meaningful, a, a meaningful outreach program that gets strong, uh, conservative-minded women who have a track record of success to bring all their talents and excitement to the party. You are pro-life. You don't want to reopen the abortion debate. There are, you know, there are deeply held positions on, on these issues. I think to have a political party to be the, the agent of change on this, uh, at this point, it's not the right way to go. So are you feminist? Uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you mean by that? I think the core of that is that to recognize the fundamental equality between men and women and nothing that should be closed to women by virtue of the fact that they are women and that there has to be this lens of public policy that that realizes that. And my my wife is the most upset when someone got to where they are, not because they deserved it, but just because uh, they ticked the box, a demographic box. In the Conservative Party, we've had the first female Prime Minister. Ronna Ambrose was elected leader of our caucus. She never mentioned once in her speeches that she was a woman and we should vote for her because she's a woman. She was calm, confident, assertive, strong, and we voted for her because of all those reasons. But I think women want to have that full Partnership. Yeah. Tell me one thing that Canadians would be surprised to learn about you. Yeah, these would be tougher questions, like policy stuff. I could. No, we're done with policy. It's over. <laughs> I do. Ha I do have a couple. Like I said, a couple nerdish tendencies. Uh, so your nerd is what you want people to know. <laughs> so one time I got asked that if I was a nerd, and I answered, "Well, if you did a Venn diagram between interests that nerds had and interests that I had, there'd be a lot of overlap." What's and the so, nerdiest thing that you're into? Well, someone just someone pointed out that the term Venn diagram is pretty nerdy. So Fair. Good talk. Thanks. Good talk, Anishir. Thanks very much.